Hello everyone, this is the video number 13th of Unit 5 and I will continue from the previous work that I've done uh, for the ceiling design and as you see uh, in today's lecture I'm, I actually uh, prepared for you uh, a nice uh, presentation about families uh, that's, that's a small presentation that I prepared that might help you to, you know, a better understand how they actually uh, where or how work or how they actually uh, structured. And uh, in this very basic or very simple presentation, uh, I I mainly want to describe the types of the families that we have, and some some students uh, or some some actually uh, architects when they work with the the family they actually confuse between them. And one of the most uh, really, really incorrect things to be done in, in, in your job while you're working in Revit is to neglect a little bit of this theoretical uh, aspects of the families. I know some of you just, you know, like, uh, like just to do things by, you know, work or hands-on system. And they hate to study anything or even to look at any type of theoretical framework. But uh, this is, uh, trust me, in, in Revit, it's really not the... Not really a good thing to be done. I'm not saying that you go ahead and read lots, lots of uh, books, and uh, I'm not really about that. But really try to understand the basic of why they've been created, how they've been created, and what for. For example, types of the families. That's that's one of the really important topics to you know understand. It will help you later on to to categorize uh, the, the architectural elements you see, and you know why they act like that and why they some of them they don't respond or don't uh, you know you know you can't tr create them the way you create the others first we have system families and families again before i go to system families is almost everything you can or you have as an architectural element like doors windows uh anything uh, walls slabs stairs actually has been d defined or or divided into architectural elements. So a door is an architectural element, but within this door, you have lots of families. So it could be double door, uh, double, double leaf, single leaf. Uh, each one of them can have different types or type families. So for example, system families. And in, in this method, or, in, or sorry, in this type of families, we actually trying to describe uh, all type of constructional important parts of the building. Usually you build them on site, so anything like walls, anything like floors or stairs actually uh, categorize as a system families. And we, we call them, or actually what it is called them, as a system families because they actually, and I mean by these, uh, Autodesk, they actually they preload or pre-design them for you. And you cannot that's the issue you cannot actually do them or you know start designing them from from scratch it's 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 really annoying to understand this topic and if we go back to rivet uh all architectural elements against structural elements like walls if you if you noticed it's already been defined for you here and you cannot load that and it differ from you know the way you dealt with doors and wherever you like to find or to go to the libraries you don't find things you want you don't find the door you want in here you go and load families and you find uh, lots of architectural uh, elements for your lots of doors to pick up from or you go download and download the door you want you will not find that uh, done in walls so in walls you you don't have the option to load them actually and you need to define depend on the basic uh, types that have been designed here for you whether generic uh, foundation uh, exterior interior partitions uh, curtain wall or whatever and then take it and then go edit type you know as we've done that several times and then you design whatever you want by duplicating of course first so you have to duplicate and then you go to edit structure so those types of, of architectural elements, those type of families called system families, and we call them again, or Autodesk called them system families because they are built in within Revit system. So you, and they are actually a really important constructional envelope, usually f type of architectural elements. On the other hand, we have the second type, 
and we call them component family or loadable families. Component families actually are almost non-constructional, off-site built, less important, whatever you want to think it, you know, like doors, windows, and furniture, and usually they are repeated in the current project, you know, and you can even repeat that or reuse them in other projects. So a door can be repeated in one, I'll go back to the ground floor, so the door can be, you know, copied in the same project, and you can load that door family in other projects and use it again. Well, that will not be done when you have, uh, easily actually, when you have a wall, so it's really you need to do something else, an extra thing, to load that door that we designed, that first one that I, I just renamed it after myself, you have to do some extra steps to load that into another file and that is not being saved as an external extension so you know the old Revit file is RVT while you know the families are RFT and as an extension so that door is an external actually extension that it has and you can even save it as uh, by editing its family actually so and then by editing it if you press on that and you can find that that's Revit, that's Revit family again and it's like a rivet but just for that door and you're gonna find that door only in it so if you go ahead and save as you know that family you're gonna find the extension provided for you is .rfa and it's different from you know it different from the project environment and when you go there and you try to make a save as you're gonna see that it's .rvt not r r uh, okay I forgot that it's RFA or RFT, I even forget that, sorry. So, it won't go to RFA as a Revit family. So, other one is RVT, while this one is RFA, which is a Revit family. So, try to understand the difference between, between the component families, like uh, doors and windows, which actually built an edit uh, family or Revit uh, project, uh, Revit uh, family editor, sorry while those doors only either been built before and loaded into the template and you actually need to edit types and duplicate them in order to create uh, your own walls and you cannot save that as an extension as an external extension file so that's the second type again this guy usually meant to be done or to be dealt with the same file component can be an external file you can load them into any type you can repeat them in the same project or even any other project the third type of families is uh, in place families and they are very special parts that will not be repeated in the same project actually not even the same project no in any other project so you technically you build that because a very crazy shape or very specific need that happen only once uh, maximum maximum twice in the project and it will never repeat it anywhere else in the same project nor any other projects so we spoke about that I think in the previous lecture and when uh, I try to describe that for you it's uh, you know here model in place yeah and the example has been provided if you remember when we talked about the column and that column it's actually need a desk that goes around it so the desk it's a really customized and handmade uh, desk that's really it only fits in here and usually you don't find that in any kind of provider you, you might need to, you know a special carpenter to design it for you or a special company to design it for you so that's what we mean we mean by model in place you model that it's gonna open uh, like a like a Revit family editor within the project environment, allow you to design this uh, family only here, and it shouldn't be repeated. If it's it, if it's meant to be repeated in more than one place, and it should be done as a, a component here, which is you know a, a, a loadable component family rather than a model in place. Anyway, so that's been said. Those are the main three types of family things that constructionally important cannot be reloaded easily and met, done by outsider and it's usually you have to duplicate within the existence you can start you cannot start them from scratch this guy loadable component are less important non-constructional things like doors and windows and they are actually built outside the Revit environment 
not like the system families and they are made in Revit uh, family editor and you can save them with on with their own extension which is the RFA as we saw and the final thing is the in place and they are a specific made family for a specific function for a specific place and they shouldn't be repeated actually in the same project nor in any other projects now family as as the most dealt with the component family is the, the, the most you know the one that you actually can involve with probably will be the component family or the loadable families and if you will try to categorize them they're actually lots of way or they have a sub other subcategories for example you have you know a level base family so level base family like a tree or a desk or a bed is a it's again good idea to understand that so you're going to go to component and then pl place a component and notice that for example a desk it's actually need a level to be followed it's for example it's following the ground floor so you some people when i when first they deal with the, the desk and level based family they think that it's a slab base so it's need a slab to sit on like in reality but in reality in, in, in actual rivets, it's, you can place it here outside. It doesn't depend on the need of a floor beneath it, like in here. So be aware of this. It can be placed in any horizontal level. That's why we call them a level base. Uh, several methods of that, like uh, any other type of, usually lots of type of furniture, like a chair, for example, uh, also follow the same thing. Uh, and uh, the second category are actually the in-wall base. And the in-wall base, like any type of doors, windows, and we spoke about that in a previous lecture. And again, if you remember the door itself, it cannot stand or existed by itself. And you can keep this, you know, like not allowed sign. And whenever you try to install or to add this door, double door actually, to the project, you need a wall like this so you can see it and add it. So they actually depend not only on the level that they are, but they're actually more dependent on being placed inside a wall. So they need a wall so they actually exist. Same thing you can find with uh, doors and same windows and same thing you can find also in opening and shafts, I think. Now, the third type are the wall face base and they are like mirrors or any type of uh, lighting wall lighting brackets so if if I go to 3d now but even section so you can have a look and you know like I'll go to um, <clears throat> component place component and I can go load family here from here and I can go up for example let me see and whatever, whatever we have furniture maybe mirror for example this one so this mirror is actually gonna place as an architectural element on the wall itself so now I'm gonna click it's gonna place that as a vertical element and it's actually need a surface or a wall face to be placed and it doesn't cut you know the wall like the what happened here with the in wall family system like the window or like a door it's actually cut an opening in it and you know it's uh, actually goes within the the wall itself rather this guy is actually need this face of that wall in order to be attached to it uh, and it's also doesn't cut through the wall itself like what this guy did so that's the difference so that's the in wall uh, base while the, we have a wall face uh, base ceiling base again and it's you can all categorize those as a face base but these guys are attached to a wall face while this one attached to a ceiling base and usually you find that with the lightning fixtures so if we go back to the ceiling ground floor where we designed the ceiling before and uh, if i go to architecture and again component to place a component load a family and let's go for something like lightning uh, that's lightning and architecture and let's go internal so see it's even been highlighted for you with the ceiling lights and that those guys actually uh, are needing ceiling element to be placed so when you click on them loading them you see that you can see them now happily if you jump here where there is no ceiling 
you're going to really, really in a bad pain because you're not allowed to do that. And also, if you go to the ground floor, careful because you're probably not being able to see anything at all. So remember when you place ceiling elements, you have to go in the ceiling view. And then, you know, you can place that guy here. Okay, or even here because that's a 600 by 600 and here uh, that's the plane system so you can place whatever you want and you can see that this architectural uh, family has been or component family has actually been placed correctly in the ceiling itself another type of the families you can find is the curtain wall base and we spoke about that in the previous tutorials and we said that we have uh, uh, in, in the wall design we have the normal walls like those guys and within we have their own doors and windows and when we go and we design uh, <clears throat> sorry when we go and design a curtain wall and the curtain wall system actually is if you place that so you need uh, or the other one the curtain the storefront for example it's uh, it's actually been divided and it's been having its own division and paneling so each panel inside this guy this is a panel system and they actually exist only within you know only within that uh, curtain wall you, you shouldn't you are not allowed to place that outside and the same thing if you want to if you want to load a door in here so you're going to go to the architecture and then component uh, sorry a door and when you load that door be aware that uh, you are not supposed to do to load any normal type of doors that fit in a normal wall so when you go doors you be careful that you need to load our curtain they are door and they are curtain wall doors see that the, that guy that guy that guy and they are designed to be loaded only in as a sorry to work only as a panel that you have in here so now it's been loaded if I go and pick up the panel which is again its curtain base system I can replace it by the wall uh, I can replace it by actually an empty one or a glass one a solid one or even the door that I loaded which uh, I don't know where it went anyway so uh, that's that's really an important uh, topic to be understand I explained that by the way in a couple of lectures before and, uh, and especially when we design a curtain wall system but I wanted to highlight that for you that you can replace that even with a window or a door and those types of families or even a panel a solid one a glass one or a custom one that have any type of ornament or opening all those are actually not a normal type of families and you cannot place them in uh, a normal wall that you have designed before you have to place them in a curtain wall and that's they have the name of a curtain wall base face base you can find that with a lots of subcategories you might find that a roof base or any other uh, free shape any other roof any other any other of geometry you have and those types uh, I think like brackets so let go what type of suggested here it's I didn't I didn't write that down anyway so if I go again to component let us load any type of uh, what do we have in here <clears throat> you can find that in furniture by the way and you can find that also in lightning or even mechanical uh, plumbing planting piping uh, furniture types no, no. I'm thinking mechanical, if I am not wrong. Uh, architecture types uh, nope I 
try with the lighting uh, external maybe and no internal which one let's see uh, those are ceiling and those Anyway, I can't find anything uh, actually. I cannot remember anything easily, and somehow it slipped out of my mind. Air railing profile plumbing. Anything interesting here? Fixtures, maybe? That will be your notes, and uh, a good example for the wall base. Shower sinks. No. Anyway, couldn't find anything interesting actually, and you can anyway identify them by the existence of uh, face uh, options. I uh, really want to show you, but sorry for that. Special equipments, fire protection maybe. Yeah, let me try it, this one. It can be also categorized no. It doesn't allow us to place on a face. That's so sad. Anyway, so you're gonna find an, an, an within the option that you find, you're gonna find um, an, another option to allow you to place on a face. Uh, sorry for that. I didn't find anything uh, useful to show you. And within the options, you will find here not only to place on a working plane or a wall, rather than you can pick a face and you can go ahead and place it in any face, not only vertical. That would be really good if you have an inclined roof, for example, and you can place it on any other surface, not only by necessary a horizontal or vertical. Sorry about that again, but I couldn't find a suitable example for you for this one. Annotation, and again, you can load any type of uh, architecture annotation and uh, by that you can go ahead and even components and you go again uh, sorry you can go right to click cancel yeah modify and in the modify nope annotation and here, for example, that's the that's the that's the first type of annotation. Again, you will notice that all types provided here have uh, an actually a preload system for you. So, for example, those annotation here is basically the uh, same thing that we spoke about here, system families, because they already been defined for you. And if you need to change them, you need to duplicate that. So also annotation, the point that I wanted to talk about, not only the physical model uh, like a wall or physical architectural elements like a model uh, wall or a column can be considered as uh, a component or system family while even annotation can be considered also like that. And some of those elements are actually changeable like a tick mark, for example, like the shape of the head of a leader type, all those can be designed again outside the outside the, the annotation and also can be loaded. Uh, the same thing can be done when you design uh, grids, for example, the grid uh, here, like, like this guy. And again, if you go to edit type, that's again preload for you. But uh, for example, look at the symbol here and it's M underscore grid head circle so what is this guy and you can replace it by this one so the this system actually can be replaced by this guy would have no bubble in it so if i hit apply it should change hit okay it should be changed the type see that doesn't have the bubble in it and that is again a family it's an annotation family but you can make that or change that outside in a, in a special uh, RFA family or Revit uh, family editor uh, family and you can change that back by selecting it here edit type and load it 
and inside the bigger family that is actually named the grid 6.5 millimeter bubble it's kind of a nested family so this the whole thing the whole grid the text the head the dash line the line type of the dash line all been stored in a predefined system named grid 6.5 millimeter bubble while inside that you can find a loadable component family which is you know the m grid head and the m grid head no bubble that's that's a kind of more advanced topic but just i wanted to show you that not only the physical uh, or the you know like a more uh, you know more modeling tools like doors and windows and wall are actually famous but also annotation consider as uh, uh, families and they also you can design them also categorize are either component you cannot design them or uh, they are preload or component families that you can load them and design them outside of the project environment. So that's uh, that's what I wanted you know to to have a look at and to think about and not only try to you know just go ahead and model things. I really needed you to understand this. Some notes also I know I noticed about you know families, uh, especially when you load doors and try not to load that component the wrong way. So. There's two ways again if, if you go ahead and you know place a component and then you place that component you can go ahead and during that you can load the component you want so again if you go ahead and load a door okay like this guy or whatever okay you pick up that type again you might get a, a warning message sell, telling you that uh, it cannot be loaded blah 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 and, and that's because it, it's it's a door family you are about to load and when you load that you should go to architecture you should go to doors and then load it from here as a load family not as a part of a component I know they are both component again that's another issue that lots of my students find it you know annoying and they tell me that they are both components so why this you know you know why this fussiness and why that's been happened because that's a component that belongs to a specific uh, thing which is a door shouldn't be loaded from outside as a component so be aware of this and 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 sometimes I know some student also go to the door and instead of placing a door here he goes and he loads the family within the door itself so he come from here and load, he is in the door, right? And he go load family and he try to load something else like a lightning fixture. And he getting, uh, he end up with a warning message telling him no. Another annoying issue, as I said, is you have a door and then you want to load a curtain door family in it or the other way around. And you end up by a warning messages or failure. Some situation even in the exam shouting, uh, Revit is not working and I cannot load the family. Uh, I saw the family, I loaded the family, but I didn't see lots of excuses, a lot of far cries and, you know, like trying just to to see or try to understand why it's, it is not working. This is a common mistake, really annoying issue that you might face when you deal with families that you load them in the incorrect way or from the incorrect command. Anyway, that's uh, that's a point, and also you can copy paste the system families by using transfer projects. So I said in the beginning that the system families uh, actually really hard to be loaded. So if I have in this file, for example, if I go to walls, I defined uh, a wall that have my name. If you remember, that's uh, start up with my name in it. So if you if you go ahead and start up a new file, a new Revit project environment file, you shouldn't see you shouldn't see the type of wall that I just designed under my name. See nothing, and that might be a little bit annoying because you define that so you can load them again. Again, this is the issue of a system component, and they shouldn't you know appear here and they shouldn't be a part of the fixed library within the rivet itself so what you have to do you go to manage and from manage you can find this command transfer project standards okay and I do believe that you need the other project that you want to copy from 
still open here and as you see you know, that's the new project that's the old project I'll check none and then I'll go to the architectural category or architectural limit you want to copy from I say wall types and then I say okay override whatever types that I have now if you go to architecture walls and you drop you use this drop down menu you should find the families you defined like Ferraz the one that start up with the Ferraz one uh, it's been taken from that file you know the old one that we've been working on to this guy you know which is the new file that it doesn't have anything to start up with so that's an that's a good way also to start the, the types uh, to, to copy actually the system file families from one project file to another one I'll try it in the next videos uh, within the same sequence of you of this unit to go ahead and uh, show you in the next video how to place uh, the, the uh, furnitures and uh, what you might find useful and how to align them to specific walls uh, what happen if you want to see them in elevation are they actually you know can be cut in this section and uh, lots of topics and lots of uh, you know things to be said about uh, placing uh, uh, general families and also in the video after that I'll show you how to place more structural columns how to create your own plan for the columns only and the same thing for the beams uh, so I uh, wish to see you in the next video thank you for listening and have a good day bye bye